Okay, that will leave us to our 6.7 item, 10.50 a.m., consideration of report from PG&E representatives regarding PG&E's outlook for public safety power shutoffs, also known as PSPS, and overall wildfire safety efforts. And I believe that we had Melinda Rivera here with us, and so the floor is yours if we can get her unmuted. Hi, uh, good morning, uh, Chairman Sabat and members of the Board of Supervisors, County Administrator Hutchinson. Can you see my video and can you hear me okay? We can definitely hear you and see you. Okay, great. I am going to share my screen, I hope. Can you see a, 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 a PG&E PowerPoint on the screen? We see a big blue screen, yes. Okay, great. All right. So I am going to try to go through this PowerPoint presentation and advance the slides manually at the same time. So we'll see how this goes. Thank you again for taking the time to meet with us this morning. My name is Melinda Rivera. I work in local government relations and local public affairs for PG&E for the area of Lake County and Sonoma County. Joining me this morning for the presentation is John Stallman, who is our principal lead for microgrid strategies for PG&E. We want to talk today about what we are doing uh, as a company to reduce the threat of wildfire locally and the opportunities for PG&E to work with Lake County to improve the public safety power shutoff program for 2021. Just taking a brief moment to discuss safety, to make sure that everyone is safe and aware of their surroundings. In the event of an earthquake, please uh, drop, cover, and hold. We would also like to encourage everyone to take all necessary COVID-19 safety precautions. So these next few slides I, um, we will go through and then obviously there's lots of, uh, hopefully, there is plenty of time for questions um, for any of these slides that we go through um, with you this morning. So this is a, an overview in Lake County. Uh, it includes information about PG&E's electric infrastructure and information regarding the work that PG&E has conducted in 2020. Following the 2020 public safety power shutoff events, PG&E incorporated feedback from customers and from officials at the local, state, and tribal levels in order to prioritize and implement continued efforts regarding public safety power shutoffs. We will continue to do this in 2021. You can see illustrated on this slide, there is a high fire threat map developed by the California Public Utilities Commission in coordination with CAL FIRE. This was also based on input from electric utilities, telecom providers, and local public safety agencies. This map shows areas that are at high risk for wildfires. The areas in red include tier three areas, which are the highest risk. And then the gold areas are tier two, which is elevated risk. This map can be accessed at cpuc.ca.gov forward slash fire threat maps. Our community wildfire safety program is focused on reducing wildfire risks using technology, stronger power lines, and other tools to make the electric system safer for our communities. On this slide, there is an overview of the efforts in Lake County. This includes system hardening, which involves the installation of equipment designed and built to be more resistant to severe weather. Part of this work includes replacing bare power lines with larger covered lines to reduce the risk of outages caused by vegetation or birds or animals, and to eliminate the risk of bare power lines coming into contact with one another. It also includes sectionalizing devices to limit the number of customers who are impacted during a public safety power shutoff event. We are continuing to install these sectionalizing devices, and we are also working to automate some of the existing devices. These sectionalizing devices separate the electric grid into smaller parts, and this allows us to de-energize targeted areas during severe weather. 
We are addressing vegetation that poses a higher potential for wildfire risk in high fire threat areas through our enhanced vegetation management program. We are opening community resource centers, installing substations and distribution microgrids, and, and John Stallman will cover this in a few minutes. We are improving our weather forecasting capabilities and monitoring and our response to wildfires through the installation of weather stations and high definition cameras. Now, um, I can't actually, I've got something else covering the, this column on my uh, screen, but there is, um, there are three rows where there is an NA, which is a little confusing. Um, just to note that for community resource centers, for the weather stations, for the high definition cameras, uh, pg e is continuing to gather feedback from County Office of Emergency Services on any areas um, that could be potential locations for the deployment of any of these assets, either the community resource centers, the weather stations, or the cameras. So we're still in ongoing um, communication with Office of Emergency Services to determine if there are any areas um, where there's not already existing coverage uh, provided by any of these equipment or assets. And then um, as identified, and we can move forward with property owners to see if it's uh, possible to place any of these resources. On this slide, you can see where in the county um, pg e anticipates conducting enhanced vegetation management work. This work is uh, to address vegetation that poses a higher potential for wildfire risk in high fire threat areas. This work exceeds state standards for minimum clearances around power lines. It involves conducting additional inspections and evaluates the condition of trees that may need to be addressed if the trees are tall enough to strike the lines or equipment. For this next part of the presentation, I will turn it over to my colleague, John Stone. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Melinda, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, first I want to jump into talking about um, uh, generation, uh, temporary generation that would come to the substations within the Lake County area, and then we'll talk about the distribution microgrids that um, are, are set up for several different communities around the, the Lake County area. So first, um, if you recall, in 2020, we, um, we set up uh, uh, about 60 substations throughout the service area to mitigate PSPS. And, um, and through that, uh, we set it up to enable those 60 substations to receive temporary generation. And, um, and then we staged generation at several different substations, including several within Lake County. Um, Last year, though, um, we made really um, dramatic improvements to our weather modeling, our um, our grid operations, and our and our overall um, resiliency with the system. We we made the PSPS events smaller um, through these technologies, and um, and so when we went to go operate all of those uh, substations, enabled those substations, we found that we we really we energized three of those substations during last year. So our meteorology and our modeling and all the work that we did really helped us reduce the impacts and therefore the, the number of substations that we um, were able to operate was, was really amounted to three. So given, given that, that our experience was we prepared, we built an insurance plan, we, we used um, three out of all of those substations that we're, we're, um, we're modifying our substation temporary generation um, program for 2021. And we're going to pre-interconnect and test um, 10 different substations um, uh, throughout the ser service area. And, and several of those are um, in your service area. Pardon me, I'll turn my camera on just a minute. Um, 
There you go. Um, so we're, we set up, um, we're, we have submitted for 10 substations throughout the service area. And um, uh, so we're, we're also, uh, along with those 10, we are um, developing the energization plans um, for three additional substation microgrids through the area. So understanding that there are 10 that um, we have submitted to the CPUC um, and we're waiting for confirmation on that. Those 10 are, are substations that we're going to set up with generation. And then we're preparing an additional three to give us the kind of flexibility during an event, depending on where the weather shows up and where we need to deploy generation to. Um, so along with that, um, we are... Um, um, we, dirt, when we set up substation generation in your area, a key key factor is is that the distribution system needs to also be safe to energize. So understanding that if we're going to have generation at the substation, that replaces the transmission line and the source. And then we're able to energize the distribution system and we energize the distribution system out to the tier two, tier three and weather areas that form. Um, so um, the three substations in your area that we're preparing to um, provide generation to are Clear Lake Sub, Hartley Sub and Canocti Sub. And um, and right now, as I mentioned, if you focus your, your attention on the center of these time bars or these progress bars, you'll notice a green area that says regulatory approval. And so right now we're at the point where we've done all the scoping, we've, we've done all the substation preparation, all the design and engineering, and basically PG&E has done everything we can do up to this point um, to be ready to enable those substations. And the very last um, part of this before we can install the, sub, the, the generation at the substations is to get regulatory approval. So that's the position that we're at with substation microgrids. We can go ahead and go to the next slide. <clears throat> okay, so for, um, for distribution microgrids, so these types of microgrids are areas where there's tier two, tier three, and we cannot use generation out of the substation. So even if we were to have um, a source into a, into a substation, we would not be able to um, energize the distribution out of the substation when that extreme weather is over the area. So we create these, um, these microgrids called distribution microgrids, which is where we isolate a small portion of the distribution grid that is safe to energize. Typically that's the main street areas of downtown corridors that are underground. Sometimes there they have some overhead in non-tiered areas, but mostly it's underground in like a downtown main street, which captures um, a lot of the critical uh, infrastructure, the police station, fire station, maybe a water pump, we aim for um, cell towers, things of that nature to try to capture in that, in that, um, that microgrid. But we also try to capture um, and, and provide energy to um, grocery stores, fueling stations, um, uh, shelters, uh, uh, partner uh, organizations like churches, um, things like that to give a sense of community normalcy while the broader grid is de-energized. So um, again, these are Main Street. We provide a generator and it connects directly onto the distribution system. And in, in many of these cases, the technology that we're using there is something called a pre-installed interconnection hub. And that's the permanent infrastructure that is connected to the distribution grid that's permanently mounted in a location that allows us to bring in generation connected to the pre-installed interconnection hub and uh, isolate the area that's safe to energize during an event and energize that area using the, the generator. And um, uh, in Lake County, um, Middletown, Lucerne, Clear Lake North, and Clear Lake South. Um, these are the areas, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. Um, 
to, uh, uh, so Middletown, Lucerne, Clear Lake North, and Clear Lake South, those are the four locations that are being energized in Lake County. Um, and just to be clear, Clear Lake North and Clear Lake South, they are um, ready as it stands today through a temporary connection and we're making that into a more permanent connection. So we're installing more permanent facilities there um, that will look uh, a lot like Middletown and Lucerne, um, but all four of these are aimed to be um, ready and enabled for this year. Um, starting from the top, Middletown, um, and, and if you track your way over to the green bar, that's where we're at. And um, I got some photos as of uh, yesterday of the Middletown pre-installed interconnection hub, and it is complete. And we're working on um, the switches to isolate the downtown area. And um, that should be happening very soon in April. Um, Lucerne, we're, we're on track. We've, we've gotten through to the point of permits and we're getting into the construction and civil design. Um, that one is going to land a little bit later in the season. And, and if, if all things continue to go in the right order, we'll have that ready by Q4. And again, for Clear Lake North, that is fully functional now using a temporary connection at the pg e Service Center. And that covers a pretty large area of Clear Lake, um, it, the downtown area of Clear Lake, um, uh, including the waterfront, the police station, and over to um, Adventist Health Medical Facilities um, on Lakeshore Drive. And, and that one, we're installing permanent equipment as well to make it faster and easier for us to connect during an event. Um, and that permanent equipment is aimed to be complete by Q4, but it is operational as it stands today. And then Clear Lake South is the area where the hospital is um, with the community college and uh, the courthouse and, and a couple of other facilities um, down in that area. And, and that one is functional as it stands, um, but we have just started into um, getting approval for the land um, and we've finalized the land and we're moving into permits and that one should be ready by Q4 if, if the construction process progress continues as it is. Mr. Stallman, can I ask a clarifying question real quick? Q4, is that fiscal year Q4, meaning the last months before July, or Q4 on the calendar? Um, Q4 meaning um, going to land in the fiscal calendar, um, not quite the fiscal calendar that you may be thinking of, so it should be there, what is that, uh, October? right there so it's it's the permanent equipment is going to be ready by that october time frame okay. which is right at the edge of where the peak of the of the psps season is we understand okay thank you for that clarification you bet i'm happy to take any other questions or we can continue through the rest of the presentation and then i'm happy to answer questions from there there does not appear to be further questions, so let's go ahead and continue. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, John. So customer preparedness and resources. This year we are providing additional resources to help uh, customers during public events. We are partnering with community-based organizations this includes work with Disability Action Center, Disability Services and Leadership, and the Foundation of Resources for Equality and Employment for the Disabled. We are also expanding our language offerings so that we are offering resources in 16 different languages. We are partnering with food banks and we are entering into contract agreements with local food banks to provide food replacement packages during a public safety power shutoff event. In addition to these food replacement partnerships, we are also working with Meals on Wheels programs to provide an additional meal for seniors who are impacted by a public safety power shutoff event. We are collaborating with the California Foundation for Independent Living Centers to enable qualifying customers who use electrical medical devices to access backup 
portable batteries either through a grant or a lease to own arrangement or a financial loan application. We are also uh, piloting additional resources through this program, including accessible transportation resources, hotel vouchers, food stipends following a public safety power shutoff event, emergency preparedness outreach and education, and additional enrollment outreach for the medical baseline program. We are providing batteries to low income medical baseline customers who have critical medical needs. And we are also um, offering no cost equipment for income qualified customers and other um, tools for enhanced safety if the power is shut off during a PSPS event. Lastly, we, are, we have introduced a generator rebate program. This provides customers who depend on a well water pump and who live in a high fire threat area with a rebate for purchasing a qualified portable power generator. During public safety power shutoff events, we are opening community resource centers. On this slide, you can see the location that we had contracted and ready to operate for public safety power shutoff events in 2020. Uh, at these community resource centers, customers can find basic supplies and charge their medical devices or electronic devices. We aim to set up and open our community resource center locations as soon as possible after the start of a public safety power shutoff event that is forecasted to last longer than 24 hours. All of these locations follow appropriate COVID-19 health considerations. We provide grab and go supplies for customers at all sites. And we are also offering micro community resource centers, which are smaller open air tents and mobile community resource centers, which are vans in order to supplement the indoor locations for these community resource centers. Last year, we partnered with a number of food banks to provide food replacement packages during a public safety power shutoff event. Customers can find a combination of perishable and non-perishable foods at these participating food banks. Uh, participating food banks will provide food replacement packages for up to three days following restoration of power from the PSPS event and this occurs on a first come first serve basis. Some food banks offer food replacement packages to low income customers only, while other food banks do not have income restrictions. So uh, please check with your local food bank to determine if there are income requirements for these meal replacements during PSPS events. In addition to these food replacement partnerships, we are also working with Meals on Wheels to provide an additional meal for seniors who are impacted by a PSPS event. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to impact our communities, we are continuing to offer financial assistance programs to our customers. These are emergency protections um, for customers who are impacted by the pandemic. This includes suspending any service disconnections for non-payment on the account, a pause on post-enrollment verification and re-enrollment requirements for our CARE and FARA programs. We are waiving security deposits for small commercial customers, and we are allowing medical baseline customers to self-certify their eligibility. Please note that these emergency protections are set to are currently set to expire on June 30th of this year. For more information about our assistance programs, please visit pge.com forward slash COVID-19. For more information about our community wildfire safety program, please visit pge.com forward slash wildfire safety. We've also made wildfire preparedness tools available online. This includes a weather and PSPS forecasting web page, a backup power web page, 
Safety Action Center, a Prepare for Power Down website, and um, additional online resources for our medical baseline program. To make sure customers receive notification regarding any potential uh, safety outages, we are encouraging customers to mm -hmm. update the contact information that PG&E has on file. Tenants and non-account holders can sign up to receive public safety power shutoff notifications for any address where they do not have a pg and &E account by visiting pge.com forward slash PSPS alerts. So thank you so much for your time and for allowing us to meet with you this morning and to have a dialogue and, and respond to your questions that you might have. Um, anyone who has additional questions that aren't answered today please call us at 1-866-743-6589. Um, you can also email any questions to us at wildfiresafety at pge.com. Um, I am happy to answer any questions at this time. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take down your shared screen so we can all see each other. Thank you so much, Ms. Rivera, Mr. Stallman, for your presentation. Any comments or questions from the board? Supervisor Crandall. Yes, uh, I'm glad to see the uh, resource center, the, the mobile resource center. That's going to be a very big benefit in, in, in this situation. Um, I just, uh, and I don't think it's, I think it's prob probably more coordination that needs to happen on this end. Uh, I noticed you mentioned an extra meal to people that may need it, working with those folks that deliver the Meals on Wheels programs. Um, but I'm thinking also of uh, reaching out to them on my end about uh, working with someone who can go with those folks to check on people during that, that situation. I know there's a lot of talk in different uh, forums of town halls and whatnot about elders and seniors not having any type of checkup when it comes to that. There's no one really, if there's no family members to check on them, that's the best way to check on them is when you bring them a meal because they're the most needy. So uh, I need to figure out a way to coordinate someone that can do that, you know, because I don't know if they can, and that may be my, my way to reach out to uh, the place that delivers the meals. Um, so just, just bringing that up also to stimulate conversation around it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other comments or question from the board? Supervisor Paiska. Hi, Melinda. I, um, I just want to say how grateful I am for the, um, the new CRCs that were put in place last, last year. It was really helpful to have that support for the communities. And I also uh, want to thank you for your support during the storms and the support that pg e brought up to those people that were without power for several days. That was greatly appreciated by everyone. Um, I occasionally get calls about from people about um, vegetation that they're concerned about. And I uh, reach out to you and then you send someone out to go and check on their concerns. And that... Um, is, is that the way that you would prefer people to, um, to register a concern about trees in their neighborhood on power lines, or would you like it to continue in this way? So that is a very good question. And I think that vegetation management will continue to be an area for discussion, um, likely this year and next. So thank you for asking that. And uh, we definitely encourage customers to um, contact the wildfire safety phone number or to even call the 1-800-743-5000 number. That's kind of the general number where they can get a case number and get this information logged. Um, getting a case number is really the best way to track um, an individual customer's concern. And my understanding is that our vegetation management team, they do receive their concerns and they are able to follow up. Um, and I think all of uh, the county supervisors are aware if a constituent has not received a timely response. Um, I, I hope that all of the supervisors um, understand the next steps for what to do if, if they feel like a constituent has not received a timely response. I hope that answers your question. It does. And I just wanted to make that information available to the public. So they, when they're looking at concerns in their communities, they know um, who to contact and what to do. I had a question. Um, 
I, I'm not, it was one of the beginning slides where you had um, the targets for 2020 and 2021. And I was looking at the, um, the, the mile lines of hardening and there was significant hardening that happened last year of the system, but it looked like the target for this year was 1.1 miles. And I know last, it looked like last year was 14 miles or something along those lines. So I'm just wondering if that's correct. Um, does it, is the consensus that we don't have any more line, line miles to harden after that 1.1 mile, or is that just the goal for this year? Supervisor Paiska, that is an excellent question. And um, I think, I don't know if I'm able to phone a friend. It doesn't look like I have a colleague, another colleague on the line who might be able to answer that. So um, if you'll allow me, I would like to follow up and um, get that information to you later that this week, if that's possible. Oh, there's Donovan. <laughs> Uh, Donovan, we cannot hear you. I'm not sure if you're trying to speak to us or not. Still not, still muted, Donovan. It, Donovan, it looks like you're unmuted on Zoom, but uh, you might have a hardware mute on your side. Maybe your microphone or something like that. Maybe we can get that uh, taken care of, maybe rebooting and reloading uh, the Zoom room and seeing if that works out. Well, basically my question is just about ongoing maintenance and um, ongoing upgrades. And I want to make sure that our infrastructure is in a continually um, in a continual pattern of upgrading to the best technology. And I wanted to make sure that 1.1 mile was not the, the, the rest that we had to do, that we're gonna keep that focus on upgrading throughout the, the network. I think it's a great question. So I will follow up with uh, you supervisor or well with uh, the county administrator so that she can relay the information to the entire board later this week. And uh, apologies for um, Donovan's technical difficulties. I was just trying to call him as well. So um, we will get back to you soon. Thank you, Jake, if it's possible to maybe share the phone number to Donovan so that he might be able to call in, might be an easier way than uh, uh, through the virtual um, computer. And then let's see if we can get him back on. But let's go ahead and continue with any other questions from board members or comments. Supervisor Simon. I just appreciate the updates today, Melinda and John, and also um, uh, who's that Donovan trying to get on? I think so. I uh, appreciate the information. You know, I know we, we have moved forward uh, from last year. It's nice to hear that the um, obviously the Middletown and the Lucerne project are, you know, moving along. But um, yeah, along with Jessica, just continuing on that uh, hardening of our systems and looking at opportunities, you know, even undergrounding, if there ever is an opportunity, always put that out there. That could be um, as we rebuild uh, things that may have been damaged uh, in fire or other instances. So um, appreciate it and uh, we'll continue to communicate directly with you on issues. Uh, Jessica already hit on, um, you know, cleaning up from all of the contractors that you have, making sure that our constituents know uh, where to get those complaints in so they can get that stuff cleaned up. I appreciate you guys talking about that. But um, other than that, uh, we'll be ready. Uh, as you guys know, and Jessica, you know, talked about earlier, the risk reduction authority, you know, constant on our mind right now with the amount of precipitation we got here in Lake County and throughout the state that it's going to be uh, one heck of a season for everybody. So starting the preparedness now is very important. And this is a key tool to lessen the impacts on our constituents that they've felt over the past few years. So I want to thank PG&E uh, for the update and the constant communication as we move into this fire season. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, Jake, does it, it appears to me that maybe we have Donovan on the new phone number that popped up. Is that, uh, is that correct? Um, I'm not sure. I don't really have a way to confirm. Um, I'm going to send uh, uh, speaking permissions to that phone number. 
and uh, they should have gotten. I'll ask to unmute. Oh, that looks like I muted. I'm sorry. I sent another uh, request to unmute. Donovan indicates that he is muted on that end. Star six. If you press star six, I believe you can unmute. There we go. Can anybody hear me? We can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Okay. I must have did something right. I apologize. <laughs> uh, I was on Zoom and I unmuted uh, the two options that it gave me, but I, I guess I still couldn't get through. So I called in. Um, your, your question regarding the reduction in uh, targeted miles for 2021, I know um, what, what I was told is using the new Techno Silva firing model, system, which takes into account, you know, uh, the last 25 years of fire history, uh, fire frequency, um, they use that, uh, that uh, artificial intelligence to project where fires might start. Might start. And so because they did that and they did it across all of PG&E territory, this modeling system uh, determined the, high, the highest prior, priority areas uh, for 2021. So there was a shift in what was originally planned to what's planned in 2020. Also, I think the reason that you see such a large number in 2020 was originally that the, I believe the targeted number was much less than what we actually accomplished. So uh, just... I think because if that's what we set as a target at this time based on that modeling system, I think that we might actually see a much larger number um, as we progress through 2021. Did that answer your question, Jessica? And I could follow up with some of the slides and some of the, uh, the talking points and information that the company's given me regarding that because I had that same question, why the big reduction? But uh, I don't have it in front of me at this time, uh, but uh, I'm out in the field but I can get that and I can get it to Melinda so she can send it to you. It might not be much more, but it might be a little bit of explanation as to why you, you see that reduction. Yeah, thank you for that, Donovan. So I, I have a couple questions for Ms. Rivera. Um, in, in the beginning, you talked about underground wiring uh, being one of the things that you're looking into. I don't know if it was under the hardening of uh, infrastructure or if it was under a separate category. Uh, and I'm just curious as to uh, wh where is that conversation? I, I have not heard, though maybe I just haven't been privileged to be a part of the conversations, I have not heard of PG&E uh, suggesting areas that we should underground or discussing with us undergrounding wires. Uh, has that occurred? Do we have any areas that are highlighted as uh, best way to move forward instead of hardening the wires to go underground? Um, because I see it every year on there. Uh, it, it, it's in that category, but I, I have not necessarily heard of any movement or engineering or anything of that kind to get us to underground some wires. Hi, uh, uh, Board Chair Sabatier. So um, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm looking through. I, I, I don't remember us referencing undergrounding today during the presentation, although it, certainly it might have. If you show um, the, um, the thing of what we expect to get done in 2021, that same grid that Supervisor Paiska was mentioning, uh, somewhere in there in the details, it talks about undergrounding wires. All right, well, um, I am not aware beyond what uh, the, the current project to attempt to underground um, in order to move forward with the Clear Lake South microgrid. I'll defer to John Stallman if he's aware of any other planned undergrounding um, related to safety or to public safety power shutoffs. Um, it was not part of today's presentation. There is a, however, there is a Rule 20A program mm -hmm. uh, for undergrounding in communities. Um, I can certainly uh, try to get you any other information I have on undergrounding, either related to uh, public safety power shutoff uh, events or related to Rule 20A. So I'm happy to follow up and get you that information and send it to the county administrator. Right, and, I, and we, we've discussed this topic before, you and I, and you've definitely submitted me the information on the Rule 20A. Uh, I was just curious if PG&E was being proactive 
and uh, looking at their infrastructure and figuring out what's the best use of that infrastructure. Is it hardening the wires? Is it undergrounding the wires? And if some of those cha changes are going to be forthcoming or if that's truly just up to us, it's just that I see it on the presentation and so curious if PG&E is being proactive with that. Yeah, thank you, Supervisor. I will definitely follow up and I'll get back to you on this one. Thank you for asking the question. Okay. Uh, also, uh, same, same style of question, uh, Supervisor Paiska, I was seeing that there's so, so little amount of tree removal uh, overall and, well, trees and bushes continue to grow annually. Uh, is it based on a complaint basis that will get us more accomplished for tree removal in order to, to make sure that those wires are safe? Um, uh, as you mentioned in your uh, presentation, you're very focused on what looked to me like the St. Helena, uh, the route to Saint, up over St. Helena, south of Middletown. Uh, but ev everywhere else, there, there's still vegetation growing, moving towards the wires. I know you've done a lot of work over the last two years, uh, but again, those things continue to grow. Um, is it just based, is the best way to just accomplish the complaint form? Uh, or is there, um, Again, is it the same situation as we were told for the comment Supervisor Paiska made that uh, this is being done on a uh, needed basis based on your overall uh, region and that you're putting more efforts in other regions? Um, what, what, uh, what can we do to enhance that amount of tree removal mileage? So uh, that's a great question, uh, Chairman Sabatier, and I appreciate it. So vegetation management, we... Um, we definitely do not want to be in a reactive position or um, trying to play catch up all the time on vegetation management and mitigation strategies uh, when it comes to making sure that we're doing all we can um, to reduce um, you know, impacts to lines from vegetation. So our crews, um, we're very fortunate. We have a really strong vegetation management lead who lives there in Lake County and oversees our vegetation management crews who work in Lake County. They do have a plan. Um, they regularly go out with arborists and inspectors to look at line miles and they schedule them accordingly, um, according to prioritization. So while there, that map that um, was displayed in that, um, in that one slide, uh -huh. sorry, now I've forgotten which slide it was, but I think it was slide five. Um, while it does show just a, uh, what looks like a very small, um, circuit area, that's for enhanced vegetation management. So meanwhile, in the other parts of the county, you should still be seeing routine vegetation management happening. You should still be seeing crews on a regular basis. Um, there is definitely a lot of work that the crews are trying to accomplish um, as much as possible before the next fire season starts. Um, so that work is happening right now. If and, and yes, of course, if, if you feel supervisor or if anyone on the board or, or county staff feel that there is an escalated issue, if you feel that there is a certain circuit area where there are concerns about safety due to vegetation, um, please let us know. We definitely would like to hear about that. And, and um, we, we try to be very responsive to, to any concerns, but especially around vegetation management. So thank you for asking that. And I appreciate you uh, splicing it up between the routine and the enhanced uh, so that that would uh, help better understand why the mileage for the enhanced was much smaller than I had anticipated to see. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, later on, you uh, remarked about the fact that there's a generator rebate um, uh, through PG&E. Uh, is that for a generator? Is that for a battery backup for a solar system? Is that for anything that generates electricity for your house to be able to continue to be able to have electricity for wells or for medicine or for anything like that? Or is it a specific type of product, which when I think of generator, I think of your typical uh, diesel fuel gas or even propane generator. But I'm, I'm thinking right now a lot of people are moving towards battery backups and wondering if that... Um, is possible for rebates. Oh, you Sorry. remuted yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Here, uh, technology. So that is an excellent question, Supervisor. Um, I am going to see if I can share my screen. 
one more time. Um, this is a new uh, program. So this just got launched a few months ago. So I am still learning about this as as we go along too. So I will send this this slide. This was kind of a, an appendix as needed slide. I'll send this over to uh, Administrator Hutchinson as well. So um, those are really good questions. So this is specifically for customers who are in high fire threat districts who depend on a well water pump. So um, it offers a $300 rebate for eligible customers and if the customers are also in the CARE or FARA program, then those customers are eligible for a $500 rebate. So um, if, if the customer has an active electric PG&E account, resides in a tier two or tier three area, and relies on well water pumping for their water needs, then they would be eligible for this rebate. So, um, I, I wish I had more detail to provide about this. I do have a link here to go to pge.com forward slash backup power. Um, but yeah, it's I, I'm really uh, excited to share this information with the, with the board. This is a newer um, offering this year or just in the last few months. So um, hoping that I can have more information for you. I, I will look into it and see what other information I can find out for you. Okay, I appreciate that. And then uh, lastly, you showed a list of um, uh, collaborations that you have. And on that list, I saw that there was Wine Country Radio. There was some other news stations as well, most likely uh, in the Bay Area. Um, wondering if there's a way to connect you with our local community radio. We were just discussing our PEG TV, uh, which is our community station on Channel 8 through Mediacom. Uh, and then there's also a KPFZ. I just wanted to make sure that if you have not had the opportunity to connect with those, since those are very lake-centric um, broadcasts, uh, that we connect you with those so that we can make sure to uh, provide that collaboration. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Supervisor Swatia. Yes, we are. Um, uh, we do have a relationship with KPFC. We are very thankful for them. And thank you um, about the reference for PIG TV. I will follow up with our um, marketing and communications team to make sure that we do have uh, a relationship there. Thank you for suggesting that. Okay. And overall, I, I do have to say, I mean, I, I don't know if the weather was worse last year or the same last year, but it seemed that your uh, PSPSs were shorter um, and, and less frequent and more uh, localized. And I appreciate that because that has been the uh, message that we've been hearing from PG&E over the past two or three years, uh, that that will, was the plan. And so that seems to uh, be what's happening. And I, I hope that we can continue to see that trend uh, in more localized, shorter, uh, less frequent PSPS for all of us to have to experience. And, and so I just want to say that I, I am seeing the positive. I know I have a lot of questions, but there, there's definitely been a, a, a progress that's been made. So appreciate that. If there's no further comments from board members, let's go ahead and open it up to the public. Anyone have any questions about this agenda item or comments? I see Sheriff Martin popped up. I'm guessing he has something to say. I do. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to start out with, uh, there's, I, I can't pass up the opportunity to acknowledge the market improvement that PG&E has shown uh, from the first year that we had these public safety power shutoffs. Um, while it's it's always an inconvenience for everybody that's affected, you guys have, have been responsive to our many, many requests, uh, and you continue to be, uh, be responsive. Um, it, and that goes all the way from the notifications, the messaging, reducing the scope of this. Um, I just want to thank you for that. Um, this year, seemed, it looks like we're even taking a, a more human approach to recognize that these not only are an inconvenience, but they have a, a significant financial impact on members of our community and, and implementing these programs, like the rebate program, or we're reaching out to some of the food banks to help the, uh, the people in our community that are in, in most dire need and, and most impacted by these types of things. So thank you. Please continue to do that. Um, with that, um, I, I have two, you know, two questions. In, in uh, Mr. Stallman's presentation, uh, he mentioned how many generation sites there were going to be. And I don't know if he's on here or not, but it, it sounded like we had 30 last year uh, and we're proposing 13 this year. If I misunderstood that, uh, then disregard this question. But, but if that's accurate, does the reduction in the number of generation sites have any impact on PG&E's ability to sectionalize and keep the scope of these 
limit it as much as possible. And then my next question, I know you can't answer this, but so I'm putting this out there more of a, an effort to bring awareness to people. Um, but would it, would it be a good idea to uh, start messaging pg and &E customers and all people that live in the high fire areas to maybe expect a, an increase in the amount of PSPSs this year, um, given, given the extreme uh, drought conditions that we're once again experiencing? And that's all I have. Thank you. That question, um, Sheriff Martin. Um, yeah. So, um, regarding the, the I'm sorry. Who's, who's speaking uh, here? It John, looks like it's coming through. John Stallman. Oh, I couldn't understand. Could we make him a little louder? Oh, I, my apologies. That would be me. Um, I moved my microphone away from my my mouth there. Pardon me. Yes, this is John Stallman, and and. Um, I, if I understood the first question right, um, just to be to be very clear, we have we have three substations that are going to be um, uh, make made ready for generation. We're going to if we get approval, uh, then we're going to stage the generation at those locations. Um, an interesting thing is that as we've gotten a much uh, much tighter capability with our modeling, we've adopted a lot of the new technologies um, to to scope these events with that that analyze our our weather situation, that um, run that weather in through our modeling, which identifies which circuits. We've installed a, a bunch more sectionalizing devices to be able to cut those areas off at the edges of the weather polygon and keep more areas energized. Um, and so even though we're setting up three locations with generation, we've made dramatic improvements in other areas and done a lot of infrastructure work, which has allowed us to um, to reduce the impact area and keep the impact area really focused to where the weather is showing up over that tier two, tier three. Um, you know, some additional things is we've done a tremendous amount of work on the on the transmission system into the into the uh, Lake County area, the Clear Lake area, um, and that operability assessment of that transmission system has has um, in our modeling has shown a reduction in the amount of transmission impacts. Um, so that has really um, that that really helped last year. That we propose is going to help again this year. Um, so I guess the general theme is here, without going into tremendous detail on every nut and bolt that was done between the enhanced vegetation and the transmission line improvements and and um, and the sectionalizing devices on the distribution system um, and also the ability to um, keep that uh, that uh, identification of where the weather is showing up to a minimum um, we're able to keep a lot more of of the area uh, energized during a high wind event and keep them safe um, uh, I'll just add to your second part of your question, you know, what should we be doing about messaging for the year? Uh, I will really leave that to work with Melinda on, on how that um, messaging evolves. You know, the, the weather is very dry. We can anticipate a, a very dry season. Um, and I think Donovan can, can speak to the implications of that for your area very, very specifically. Um, there is, there is um, you know, information that is going to change our modeling, and our modeling is going to be modified slightly through the end of this year, and we'll need to be conscious about how the, how the, uh, the impacts to the area may change with the changes to this modeling. Um, and that'll be a constant conversation that we'll continue to have with you as we, as we um, move towards the, the, the more solid PSPS season, which generally speaking is the late summer, early fall. Um, this year, we're, we're, did we get a great benefit last year of a mild season? Well, we, we don't really think it was a mild season. We think that it was an average season. Um, would we be moving into a, a, a more aggressive season this year that causes us more impacts? Um, we, we can't ever predict the winds that are going to come, but certainly the, the dry fuels um, don't make that any easier and, and will move us in that portion of the metric of what determines our impacts. That definitely incrementally makes things more challenging. 
I don't know if Donovan or Melinda, you want to comment on that. Uh, thanks, John, and, and thank you, Sheriff Martin, for asking these questions. And the short answer is yes, we definitely want to um, work with our county and um, work with our, our partners, our, our county partners and our nonprofit partners in the county as well, to make sure that we are um, messaging early and often as we head into the next uh, public safety power shutoff season. And as John mentioned, it's it is difficult to forecast what the weather might bring us this year. Um, however, we definitely want to make sure that people are prepared uh, for whatever the season might bring. So thank you for asking that. And Donovan and I, Donovan will most likely be following up. Thank you, Linda. I believe that Donovan is no longer on the line. I could be wrong, but I do not see him. Just want to make sure Sheriff Martin was done with his uh, questions and comments on this. I am done. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Jake, let's go ahead and uh, allow phone 7257 to unmute. If you can please provide your full name when you are unmuted. I've said, all right. Looks like Hello. There. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, wonderful. And thank you so much, Sheriff, for speaking up on our behalf about more messaging, especially for this year. I live in the Clear Lake Riviera area. Uh, we are an extreme fire danger area that I believe is underserved in the PSPS events in terms of resource centers uh, and uh availability of generators for uh, important things like our water company to assure us of water available to fight fires should they start during a PSPS event. Um, and I'd also like to ask if our county is going to be continuing the PSPS county committee uh, and could there be, please, enhanced information to the public? Because as we all know, when we get into the fire season, then we find out, usually then, what things like Q4 means, which is it won't be ready till October. So we suffer from what isn't ready for our fire season the most and we need that information. We appreciate what you do for other areas, but we really need to know what you're going to do specifically in our areas. And in previous years, you've fallen short of your deadlines. And this is the time of year we need to know now to prepare now. And if you could please provide your full name. Barton Levinson. Thank you. If there's any other public comment, please raise your hand in the Zoom room by pressing the button at the bottom of your screen that says raise hand. Or if you're via phone, go ahead and dial star nine. I'm also going to ask if there's anybody in the public chamber here in the boardroom, if there is a public comment. So I'm seeing none and neither the real room or the virtual room. And so let's go ahead and bring it back to the board. Any further questions or comments? Okay, well, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, and just to kind of follow up on that last comment, uh, there is, uh, the PSPS committee has not been uh, dissolved. It is still there. Uh, so I appreciate you bringing it up and um, definitely uh, something of, of interest to possibly go ahead and put that back together to discuss where we stand. Uh, I know that we did make our comments heard by the CPUC. Uh, I have continued to be involved in CPUC meetings. Uh, just recently, this I, I want to say three weeks ago, they had a PSPS uh, CPUC meeting on uh, some of the new rules and uh, regulations that are going into place. There was a large presentation made um, by PG&E at that point in time, as well as the uh, uh, company down south in San Diego. And so uh, we're definitely keeping our eye on that as well. Uh, but again, appreciate you bringing that up. 
Um, and uh, Ms. Rivera and Mr. Stallman, thank you very much for uh, your presentations today. If you have any last words, now's the time, or else it looks to me like we are done with our item. Uh, thank you very much, uh, members of the Board of Supervisors. Thank you, Chairman Spati, and thank you, County Administrator Hutchinson. And um, we will be following up soon with more information for you in response to, in response to your questions. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you.